Coming up next, Frank and Mary here in Framingham with your co your co host Grace O'Donnell and me, Art Bergeron. Uh, our wonderful guest today is Principal of Framingham Assessor Will Naser. Uh, stay tuned. Welcome to this episode of Frank and Mary in Framingham. I'm Grace O'Donnell, Director of Elder Services for the City of Framingham. I'm Art Bergeron. Uh, my day job is as an elder law attorney at Myrick O'Connell. We're the, actually the biggest firm outside of Boston. Uh, but this show is not about elder law. It's about my friends, Frank and Mary. If you've seen any of my presentation, you know that Frank and Mary have a very simple goal. They wanna live in their house until they die and be buried in the backyard. And if that's in Framingham, that means they wanna stay right here. And the purpose of this show is to help Frank and Mary and you, if you identify with them, uh, find the programs they need to know about and the people that they need to know about so they can do exactly that. My co-host on this show is Grace O'Donnell, our, your wonderful senior center director, who finds these great people for us to talk to. And she has another wonderful person for us today, Grace. Hi, Arthur. Our guest today is Will Naser, Chief Assessor for the City of Framingham. He joins us today to talk about recent changes to the property tax deferral program and other tax exemptions that are available to people to help them pay their property tax bills. Thank you very much. Thank you, Grace. Thank you, Art. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here and be speaking with everyone. Um, what, what I'd like to present is I'm gonna go through uh, all the programs, if I could, if uh, if we could, we'll go over the deferral program because that one did have a change. But um, we do have various programs that are offered through the Board of Assessors, the Assessing Department. Uh, we are located at, at 150 Concord Street in Framingham. Um, and of course, you can reach us by telephone at 508-532-5415 or by email, you can go to our website and reach us. Um, so the assessing department, we are, are the tax assessors for the city. And um, the goal of what we do is, is, uh, is to turn value into tax. Um, but on the on part of our job is also to help people and the programs we have um, do can reduce your taxes if you're eligible. These are all uh, annual applications People would apply annually, um, and they're typically based on age and assets. Um, and the first one we have uh, is a age-based exemption, and it is a thousand dollar reduction off of your real estate tax bill. So, in that particular program, um, the age is 65 or older by July 1st of 2020. So, a past date. And then we look at income and assets, depending on your, whether you're single or married. So those uh, we, we have, again, we have uh, going to go through a lot of numbers, probably better to give us a call or reach out to us to get more details, but I'll certainly go through all the programs. So that's a thousand dollar reduction. It's called an exemption. Um, another exemption we have is also the $175 ex uh, real estate tax exemption. And that one is seven, age 70, July 1st is the date also. Um, and that you can, you can be, as I said, 70. There's also one called a survi it's surviving spouse. So if somebody, uh, if, if you had a spouse that passed away that was getting this, that carries on to the next, to the husband or wife involved with that. Um, and also included in, in this full array of uh, exemptions through the uh, assessing department is veterans exemptions. So veterans, um, obviously it's not an age-based situation. If you are a veteran with a service-related disability, um, you, you can qualify 
for an exemption on, on your real estate taxes. So again, there's a whole host of these veterans exemptions. Um, and depending on what your disability is or what type of service um, that you can qualify for exemptions uh, for an exemption as a veteran. Again, it has to be, it can't just be a veteran. It has to be a veteran with a service connected disability. Bill, uh, excuse yep. me, is there, is, there a, is there a level of disability that, that do you have a threshold level like 10% disabled or 50, or, or is there, is it, if you have a service related disability, then you qualify? Right. It, that's a good question. And it's it's 10 percent is the minimum. And you would we would look for that letter from the Veterans Administration that tells us um, it's 10 percent or whatever the percentage is. So there are some hundred percents and that's a higher uh, reduction of your real estate tax bill. Oh, oh. Um, so, so it actually relates to the to the level of your exemption. I see. It does. Uh, there's also uh paraplegic, um, different things that, that have happened to veterans. There's, there's different uh, dollar amounts for that. Um, but 10% is, is the most common one. 10 to say 99%, you get X amount off. 100%, you get another amount off. And then the other, uh, the other uh, exemptions follow um, with different amounts. Uh, but if you if you are a veteran and you have a, a service connected disability, by all means, give us a call, reach out to us. And again, the, the date will repeat it a few times. Um, these are all through March 31st of 2021 to any of these programs. You're eligible until that time frame. Um, there's also a program uh, for financial hardship. So this one is a, is a unique one because it, it would be your owning property um, and it's a discretionary one by the uh, Board of Assessors. So there's no age limit. There's no uh, particular thing. It's just a kind of an open book. It's called a financial hardship exemption. Um, and that is uh, a difficult one because it's 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 wide open, but that's one we offer, and that would be one that um, that someone would present if they're they're in that type of situation. Um, I, and I want to. I'm sorry. Go ahead, Grace. Yeah, I wanted to ask Bill. How do people go about applying for these exemptions? Is it by way of a phone call? Is there a specific form they need to fill out? Can they find the forms online? Pretty much everything we do in the assessing department is an annual application. There's, there's only one or two things I can think of. So this is an annual application, a paper application. Um, give us a call. We'll mail it out to you. We can email it to you. Um, we don't have them on the website, uh, but they are state forms. So you could go to the state site. But usually what we like to do is, is get a phone call and do kind of a qualification and figure out what what program that you're possibly uh, would qualify for. Send you out that application with the required documents we're looking to get back. Send it out. Get that information back and review it, and then uh, present it to the board of assessors who makes the decision on the um, the application. So that sounds like the phone call is probably the first step for people to take because you can probably identify. They might be eligible for several, and and that's the other question I have: Can someone have more than one exemption, or are they right. limited to only one? Really good question too. So what we do is we you, you can only get one exemption. Again, there's always an exception. That the the exception I can think of is two uh, uh, folks that are married and are both veterans they can both receive the veterans exemption on that one property. Um, and I'm going to go through a little the detail of some of the generalities of these applications as well. Um, but generally speaking, you get one exemption and we shoot for the highest one, whatever dollar amount would give you the best benefit. That's what we're looking uh, for that taxpayer to receive. Bill, can I just ask you one other question? Because you're talking about the financial hardship exemption. 
And I know that's one that, that, that in which the, the assessors obviously have some flexibility, but I, I, given what people have been going through this year because of COVID, there, there may be some unusual cases that are showing up. And I was wondering if you could give folks just a sense of, of you know, in the past, have the, have the Board of Assessors had a particular, have there been particular examples that you could that you could think of, you know, obviously without revealing confidences of the kinds of things that the assessors have considered in these kinds of situations, because this may be a very, you know, I don't want to say a taxing year that you've heard that a million times, but this may be a difficult yeah. year for a lot of folks who are dealing with their their taxes. No, another another good question, Art. Um, absolutely, I think this year is is unique in in a lot of different ways, but um, we've had people that have. Uh, terminal situations where they've, they're, you know, they're um, someone, some medical misfortune and uh, are really struggling and have some difficulties. So, um, I, and I want to, I want to say anything that comes that's, that gets to our office is confidential. That's another very, very important thing. Um, the, the department is, uh, is confidential about any of those applications coming in, any of the information that is held in, in uh, with confidentiality. But um, I would say medical is a situation that we've had before, Art, and um, you're right, perhaps this year, we, we may run into other situations where there's some misfortune and um, people need some assistance. So those things we would take into account, we need to um, have the people call us and, and, and we'll talk to them and, and get them the information and then they can put the application forward. And, um, and then, uh, as I said, we gather as much as we can. And then there's a three member board of assessors for the city. And I present those uh, applications to them and they ultimately make a decision on grant, uh, uh, whether they're gonna grant that or not. But. Um, it's a good. It's a good point. We're in a uh, unusual times here, so we may see folks that come forward with that situation. It's great that one of the reasons why we're so delighted that you, you and folks like you can be on the show, is for folks who might be at home. You know, they think of they're not usually 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 dealing with government, and they think of government as this big huge bureaucracy. And oh my God, you know, especially if they're going through hard times. So that really to give them a sense, you know, you're like a real guy, you know, and they <laughs> they. Yeah. You know, they could they could really see. Wow, oh, geez, I could talk to him. So I think I think that really can help a lot of seniors. So thank you for that. Sure, and and that's that's another good point. I'm I'm available. Um, uh, talk to me if if someone wants to talk to me. I, I'm not in some ivory tower. I'm I'm right here. I have a, a staff of uh, six other people, and we're all willing to help. Um, generally, generally. Dale Gerard, um, the office manager, and myself handle the uh, the folks applying for exemptions or deferrals, and and usually it's directed to us. But by all means, give us a call. We're we're really happy to help people out and and discuss. and And sometimes we find out a situation it, they they just don't qualify, and we're going to be very candid about that. And we don't want to waste their time or our time. So we but we we want the phone call. We want to talk to people. Um, there's another exemption, uh, is, is blind. So if you get a, uh, you'd get a certificate from the commission on, on blindness uh, through Massachusetts, and that's a $500 reduction. Um, you do need that certificate, uh, on an annual basis. So that's just another program we have for, uh, tax real estate tax reduction. So, Jumping to the one that Grace uh, alluded to earlier, this is the program. So all of the programs I've just discussed are, are exemptions. So an exemption is, is simply a one-time uh, reduction. So whether it's $1,000, $500, $1,500, whatever, that's a one-time application. It reduces it for that year. The next program, the tax deferral program, is a little bit different. It's really... The essence of it is it's a it's a delay in your payment of taxes, and what's happened this year we've had this program uh, 
you know, it's, it's been in place for many, many years. Um, what the city council did by a local option is they changed the, some of the uh, parameters to it. So um, the age on this would be 65 or older. And the date again is July 1st, 65 or older by July 1st of 2020. Um, so again, a pet previous date, the income limit would be um, 60, the highest would be 60,000. So um, previously it was $40,000. So we've upped that limit. That's changed for this year, effective for our tax year 2021. Um, and the interest. So what happens is the taxpayer applies. Hopefully they're approved. They're approved for it. The taxpayer can choose the deferral amount. So if their taxes are $5,000 for the year and they say, hey, we can, I can afford to pay a thousand, then they can, and they, and they get into this program, they can defer $4,000 if they want to do that or a hundred percent. So that's up to the taxpayer. Um, that the, the deferral does, uh, go in, does go into an account and the city does charge uh, 1% interest. So that's a change this year. Also, it was a 4% charge it's changed to 1% for this year. Um, and then what happens is when the property, the person moves out of the house, um, or there's a change there, the city then recoups that money collects that money at uh, when, uh, during when the property transfers. That's how that works. There is a little more to it. Um, and again, give us a call if that's something that you'd be interested in. That's the tax deferral program. Uh, we only have uh, less than 10 people that are in the tax deferral uh, last year. So that may be something that um, people may want to look into this year. Bill, so, can I just add one comment to this sure. one? This is a great program. This is just a great program. I have so many seniors that who, who for whom they're, you know, they may have, remember, this is not an asset based program. You don't have to show you're poor in order to qualify. You know, it, I have so many seniors who run fixed incomes and their biggest bill next to food is their tax bill, unless sure. they've got serious medical problems. And they'll call and say, you know, Mr. Bergeron, I can't afford this. I've had people say, I need to get, I'm, you know, I don't want to get a reverse mortgage. You know, it's going to have all these terrible effects. And I'll say, well, you know, you can just defer your taxes. And, and, and I, I'm glad that you highlighted the, the limits the city council imposed because I know the, the state, the state required, the state allows you to, to impose a maximum um, um, income of, if I recall correctly, as low as $20,000. And, and per year. And of course, most people, you know, that's, that's just too low. Right. But, but for the typical senior, $60,000 a year is a lot of money. Right. And so a lot of people can qualify for this. And, and if their goal, like Frank and Mary, is to stay in their house until they die, Correct. this is a way to do it. And, you know, sooner or later, the taxes will get paid. That's fine. You know, and the kids, as a result, if the kids sell the house, they're not going to end up with as much money, you know. Right. But, you know, you save your life in order to be, stay in this house, you know, and the town wants to help. And, and clearly the city council, you know, wants to help you with, with that. And, and, and you're paying a one percent interest. Right. It, it, it's it's a wonderful program. I saw. Sorry. Yeah. I just wanted to mention that. You know? No. I, and I agree. Um, it, it is. A, it is a good program. Um, there are a couple other things. If you do have a mortgage, there's a little more to it. But again, if that's a program somebody's interested in, just what you said, Art, you've, you've lived in that house for a long time and, and times are tough and, and you have the ability here to say, hey, that's a big bill, that my real estate tax bill is a big bill. Let's, let's see if I can push that to the side and I can live in this house for, a ver for, for as long as I want to live in the house. And, and um, that's a really good thing. And, and I agree with you 100% on that. Um, so those those are the uh, those are the programs we offer. I was just going to give a quick a quick rundown. Um, so, kind of talking about what what do I need to apply? So this gets into what Grace asked before. So you'd need a, the application, which we would mail out to you. In some cases, we've 
I, I've hand delivered applications or information or picked up information. I do that. I'm happy to do that um, for certain people. Uh, I'm happy. I'll do it anyway. I drive around the city. It's a, it's a great place. I, I love to drive <laughs> around here. So that gets me out of the office sometimes too. I, I enjoy that. Um, so for the income and asset programs, birth certificate, copies of income and assets, asset statements, and there may be other items requested by the board uh, to make sure you qualify for it. Um, so those are those are a couple of the, uh, the that's the um, what you need to apply. And again, to get into a little bit of the terminology, the assessed value. What's the assessed value of my home? Um, so the assessed value would be a market value of the property um, at what we call full and fair cash value. So one thing with the deferral program, people say, well, how long can I defer my taxes? There is a, 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 a threshold and that would be up to 50% of the value of the home. So if you think about that, it takes a long time to get to that threshold. So I think we had somebody that deferred up to 26 years before they met that threshold a long, long time. Um, as I mentioned, a deferral is simply a delay in payment. Uh, we use the term domicile. So Art would be familiar with this. That would be your legal or principal residence. So these programs require you to have your, your Framingham house as your domicile, as your legal residence. So you can't, if you do have a house elsewhere, it has to be, Framingham has to be considered your domicile. Um, and we throw this term around a lot, fiscal year. So our fiscal year uh, starts July 1st and runs through June 30th. So um, we're in the middle of our fiscal year now, uh, but the programs, as I said, you can, you can apply up and, up and through uh, March 31st of 2021. Um, Grace has probably mentioned these programs before. There's a couple other programs that aren't offered by the Board of Assessors. The Senior Tax Workoff Program, which is probably, Art and Grace have probably talked about that before. Um, the Circuit Breaker Tax Credit, again, that's through a professional uh, tax advisor. And also the tax collector, um, my colleague down the hall, Carolyn Lyons, has a program for uh, tax reduction, and you can speak with that group to talk about um, uh, a reduction in, in taxes. So they have a program down there as well. Um, I'm trying to think. So some of the other things uh, to keep in mind, applications are annual, as I mentioned. Once you've been approved one year, we will put you on a mailing list, and then we simply do a, ma a big mailing in the fall, usually in uh, late October, early November, gives people a good three to four to five months to put everything together. Um, and there's also, if you qualify for these programs, you do get the uh, water bill discount as well. So that that's important to remember. So Bill, can I just, can I ask what one, and, and this has been a great summary, which really focuses on seniors, but can I also just ask you just to spend a couple of minutes just talking about what if you just think your bill's too high, right? <laughs> you, yep. Right. You think you're like, geez, you know, so-and-so down the street isn't paying that much, you know, and I think my bill is too high and I want an abatement, you know? Right. You just spend a couple minutes talking about that and, you know, and how, how you would apply for that and, you know, and, and how the city kind of or the kind of figures out what that bill is that they send to you. Right. Good. Another good question. So um, so all year long, the assessing department, we we uh, we refine and we work, we do analysis and we work on the values. So if you think about it. It's a big place, it's got land, it's got commercial buildings, industrial, single family homes. How do we do all this? Well, we have really well-qualified people here. We have a very sophisticated software system and we, we think we do a pretty good job. We arrive at a value each year, um, but there is an, an appeal process, an abatement process, and that start, started on Monday and 
this year will will be a longer one. You can actually apply now till May 3rd. It's typically shorter, but there's a, a little situation uh, that we, we've extended it. But um, so you're looking at your value and you say, hey, my house is is X amount and, and I think it's, it's higher than everybody else. So again, it's a, it's a application that, that is on the website. You can go to the website and print it off. Um, you can email it to us. There's email addresses. You can mail it to us. Um, and you can, you can do, uh, you, and, and, but we need a reason to, um, to, uh, appeal. So you need to do a little homework of your own, and say, hey, mine's too high because of dot, dot, dot. And that's what we, we would need um, a reason. And then we'll come out and we'll review it and uh, we'll let you know what we think and give you an answer. Great. Great. Thanks so much, Will. We really appreciate you sharing all this information with us so that we can share it with the seniors in, in the community. And, and actually a, a number of these uh, exemptions are available as well for people purely for income circumstances. Yes. And again, by all means, um, give us a call, send me an email, ask for me. My name is Will. Uh, I'm more than happy to talk to anybody. Um, we're at uh, the the uh, Memorial Building and happy to help. Thank you. Thanks for having me on today. I really wow. appreciate the time. Thank it's you. Been great. It's been really okay. great. So thank you so much, Will, for coming on. And thank you, Grace. Every, every time you keep doing this, you keep getting great people with really, really, I think, valuable information for a lot of seniors. I just hope we don't bury Will with phone calls now because he's <laughs> so friendly. So thank it's, you. It's quite and all right. And so thank you, great. And folks, thank you very much for watching. We hope you enjoy this, this, uh, this installment and we'll look forward to seeing you on the next installment of Frank and Mary here in Framingham. Thank you very much. <laughs>